Hey everybody, Asher here, back with even more Kerbal Space Program, where let's go to Mission Control first. As you can see that I do have a few special missions here, but one new one that kind of popped up that I do want to share is that we now have a mission to build a surface outpost on Duna, which is interesting because this contract actually doesn't pay nearly as much as the surface outpost on Ike. But hey, either way, we're going to see if we can do both on our Duna mission. And what we're going to do today is test our Ike outpost, because that one has the more stringent requirements. It must support eight Kerbals, it must have a viewing Coppola, and it must have an antenna, a docking port, and the ability to generate power. So we're going to do that today. And how we're going to do it is actually by testing it on the moon. The reason that I chose the moon for this, for those of you who may not be aware, if we just look at the moon's properties real quick, we have a gravity of 0.166 as opposed to a standard of 1 on Kerbin. And as for Duna, which is over here, almost ready to be brought in, but not quite. Duna has 0.3 gravity. Ike has 0.112 gravity. So that is much closer to uh, anything that we'll be able to get in our system here just to practice with Ike. For reference, Minimus has 0 0.005 gravity, so practically nothing. But the item that we are going to be testing with today is the test landing station. Aptly named because I'm not exactly sure if this is the best way to do it. I feel like I should have a better launch system. In fact, let's just make sure real quick that I, yeah, there's actually no struts on there. So let's fix that. If you remember the video from last time, this test is still going to cost about 200000 But because we do have some good science to be had here, we do have some crew, specifically one scientist, and one pilot. They will be on the moon for a while doing experiments in this science capsule. And there's more room. You have to have eight people living here. The Duna mission only requires five, so we can actually downsize this a little bit. But the reason that I've gone for mostly a vertical plan here is partially because with the way the atmosphere is right now, if I'm going to have to aero capture this monstrosity on Duna, I'm going to need some heat shields. And I'm not exactly sure these radial decouplers have a max temperature tolerance of 2,000. That may not be able to survive a good air capture, even in Duna. I'm, like I said, I'm not exactly sure. I've never done air captures in Duna before. We could have some serious, massive explosions and sadness. But this is going to be our test station. We're sticking to it, so let's launch. Test landing station. Currently weighs 60 tons. That feels like a lot for those landing legs to take on. We'll see how it goes. We're an hour out from our designated burn. Let's not do this too badly. 24 minutes. So our solar panels are happily collecting energy. Now for those of you who are wondering, the reason I put the docking port on the bottom is because the idea for this design of ship is that it's actually going to be able to uh, go into the uh, it's going to be able to attach onto something else that does the transfer to Duna, a little nuclear sh a nuclear rocket platform. I don't know if the design I've had before is technically going to work here. I did have a pretty nice one for my jewel missions, and I know you don't need that much energy to get to uh, other places. But let's go ahead and knock out some more Delta V, and let's see here. How close can we get to a landing trajectory? Not too far now. There's our periapsis swapping places, and if we keep burning, we're going to be going in a pretty horizontal plane here. That's not bad. There we go. That works quite nicely. All right, so this is this is the kind of landing trajectory you want to get. It's going to be on the middle of the day, middle of the planet. In fact, we can probably go a little bit further over. Get us a little bit more of a shadow. Everything's going to rotate. We're probably going to end up... What's the orbital period for the moon? Depending on where this, this target is, about 24 minutes. The uh, rotation period is 6 uh, days, 2 hours. So we're probably not going to land in a crater. Probably not, I say. Let's go ahead. Here's the moon. We're actually going to test landing. So let's look at the sunrise. As we are not long for this space... All right, so 100,000 meters, 90, 80, 70, there is the sun. 
not much time until landing needs to start happening. So let's go ahead and make our first rotational maneuver. This will probably block some of the sunlight from the electric field here, but whoop. It's nice that this is so agile. We actually have two command pods on here, the Coppola and the Landercan MK2. So now we're facing backwards. Let's get a little bit closer here. 5,000, 4,000, 30,000. Now when we're about to get to 20,000, 25,000, probably time to start thinking about where we actually can put this down. There's a nice, oh, it's actually a nice ridge. The whole uh, moon trench, if you will. Never done too much exploration there, although it is, there is a similar trench on Duna, and it's interesting to try and get science from there. In fact, what I probably should be doing right now, speaking of science, at least get one crew report, process in the module, and we're just going to go ahead and do some experiments right now. And let's go ahead and keep the data here. Serve the materials bay, and let's process in the module. The reason that we're doing this is that we can reset these experiments upon landing, and this is science that we can hold on to. All right, so let's see here. Atmospheric analysis can't be done because you have to be landed. Log the pressure data. Let's put it in the module. Oh, wow. Actually, let's keep that as well. Seismic data can't do that until we land. And did we already get the goo? Well, we'll just reset it when we land. All right, so keep data. So we're good here. I'm back to landing, the actual landing part. Okay, so it's probably time that we start slowing the hell down here. I don't know if we're exactly where we need to be right now. Oh, but let's see. All right. Might be going into a crater, which could be a bit of a problem. We are losing electrical charge right now because it is actually blocked. So let's do a little bit of a rotation so we don't keep losing that charge. It just looks like where the sun is right now. We may have to just make do. So 600 meters per second in orbit. We're not doing an exact suicide burn here, but let's go ahead and start charging. Yay! Hoodle engines apparently add charge after all, so that's good. Now there's some things that I haven't quite researched yet that I could have added to this. I got some good tips in the comments about the kind of things you can do, like uh, actually getting something to process fuel by uh, getting, by you can mine for, I forget things like you can actually mine resources, put them in fuel tanks, convert that fuel or convert those materials to uh, energy. And where did, where did our landing thing go? Okay, because we actually, we actually overpowered ourselves. So here we go. Are we actually going up? We are going up. All right, let's let's fix that. Our surface speed is good. We do have plenty of power. Just uh, what's going up is now going to go down. I guess right. We're at ten thousand meters. Our radar altitude is still pretty low. Our radar altitude is still not changing, so we're actually going to free fall for a little bit. But at least we have enough fuel. We did not need those extra fuel canisters. And now our solar panels are facing the sun, which is kind of what we want. So while this design can work, I think it is probably over-tuned over for Ike. Especially because all we're going to need to do is just technically... We're, we should be able to have, use the platform that we'll be launching to Ike to actually get into orbit. So we may be able to cut two of these big fuel canisters. Maybe just have two poodles or two nukes for the engines. Probably poodles because we may need to slow down a little bit more efficiently. Because right now this is having to carry a lot of weight. So let's see here. Surface speed, radar altimeter, still not budging. Looks like we're going to be making a, a flatland landing instead of a con uh, different kind of landing. So that's good. Probably about time to start slowing down, though. So just always want to take it nice and easy. 
we're going to be bringing our surface speed down to zero. Our orbital speed is something a little bit different here, but let's see. We're almost about a thousand meters up, so that's why you check your radar altitude because if you think you have four thousand meters to go, you're going to be sorely mistaken here. So let's see. Just always burn on the retrograde. The really nice part about this station is that there's no coming home. That means I'll have to send like a little ferry mission to get people later on, but that's okay. Nothing too bad about that. So about one click up. And this looks like a pretty decent slope right here, actually. So I don't know if that's going to be a problem. There's some pretty good mesas and flatlands on Ike that you can land on. Of course, I know that from prior game experience. One thing that would be really cool is if you had, like, these things wouldn't unlock for the actual landing missions until you send a probe first. I did do a career mode like that before, and it was pretty nice because I just sent probes all throughout the universe. The way the contract system works right now, it incentivizes a lot more to you to, for you to stack contracts and send everything right away. So here we go, 12, 11. See, with the four poodles and with so much mass, I can actually control this pretty well. But we need to... Uh, we're decent right now. We're actually coming in pretty flat, so that's good. And is this actually going to be good enough? Five, four... Maybe able to throttle down just a little bit. Three, two, all right, and touchdown. One little bunny hop. Did we have a leg break is what I want to know. It does not look like it. So if that's the case, I guess I can go ahead and just activate this stage. So I just what I don't want to do is have everything fall over. So let's go ahead and just good news is that you guys have landed do I actually get the is there something that I'm missing oh wait duh there's no contract but if we're looking something like this land on Duna we meet all these requirements except for landing on Duna we meet all these requirements except for landing on Ike but I'd call that test a success let's see if we can go ahead and ditch these canisters which obviously will be repurposed for science in some way shape or form so stage Okay, it's not letting me stage those for some reason. Okay, let's decouple here. So we just don't want to fall over. To couple here. Decouple here. And decouple here. All right, so now look at the mess we've made. Four canisters all in a row. There's going to have to be some kind of better way to do it than this, but the nice thing is that we do have... Uh, Kim Berta Kerman, who can go ahead and come on out. She is actually, yeah, she's actually able to step outside for the first time on the moon. Dance on top of a poodle engine. Let's see. Can we get you to actually, hopefully not knock over the space station. Okay. And push. Not turn off, push. All right. All right, so for some reason, We'll see if we can actually get this actually removed. Of course, one way that you can do it is by, uh, how do you say this? Actually, first off, shuffling to the right's really weird. That's not exactly how that's supposed to go, but playing a flag, we have our test complete, which is great. Technically, we want these ugly engines to be out of the way, but uh, will we go home now? I don't know. So while it's kind of successful, the lack of aesthetically pleasing uh, matters with these engines on the side is not ideal. So we can take down the flag too, but we're not going to. Surface sample. We're on the midland still. EVA report to keep the data. The reason we're going to keep the data here, and the reason we don't actually have a uh, parachute, or not a parachute, we don't really have a ladder here, is that we don't really need one. What we need to do is board. And if we review the data here, we actually have EVA report. Let's process in the mobile lab and process this in the mobile lab as well. And what do you know? At all of this data here 
is pretty good and we can now take this data and it'll get us signs per day that we can transmit. We don't have any signs to transmit yet. And technically we can do the same thing if Kimberta goes up and uh, elects to reset this. But yeah, we're going to have to get rid of some of these debris. Which, like I said, you can do that at the tracking station. Alright, so... I'll keep that data for now. Do we have an EVA report while flying? Might as well. Uh-oh. Why'd you fall? It's like for some reason this just doesn't want to work sometimes. But hey, there we go. We did land our space station. I probably will do a little bit of a redesign. We learned that the Big Nine launch system is not exactly necessary. Let's actually get you on the uh, lip here. There we go. Much better. Reset the goo canister because you're a scientist. You can do that from out here. Observe the mystery goo. And let's keep data, collect data. And technically, we can uh, reset these things. But we don't have to. Observe the materials bay. Same thing for science. And this is all data that we can add onto our uh, research lab here. Temperature, log temperature, that should be new. But even then, we should be able to take that data and add it just as well because it's surface here. Seismic data, what do we have? The sensors detect a minor quake in the surface. Whoa, a geologically active moon, that's new. Let's go ahead and, uh, well, I could transmit that data, but I think we'll have a moon lander later. That'll be pretty good. Atmospheric analysis. Let me guess, there's no atmosphere, so we can't really do that. Log the pressure data, keep it, take it. Well, I guess we need to actually go around because we can't. Are you holding on to the data, I guess is what I want to know here. Seismic scan, mystery goo, there we go. So we do need to actually send her to the other side. We fly in. Flying around the moon. And see, by the power of the magic of the tracking station, we can remove the debris, and there we go. Don't mind the shape of the shadow or anything. It's just solar panels and everything else. Not some big, tall person trying to give you a hug or something else. But one other thing just to keep in mind, a little tip that I forgot to mention here, is that when you have your data, you can only store up to 500 data at a time. And you need to actually hit the Start Research button here. So right now, it's actually generating science. And that's great. Eventually I'll be able to send 500 science here. I could actually skip a lot of time and probably get a massive amount of science here. Adding scientists doesn't really count or anything. But as, say, this eventually goes, if I do more experiments or bring more experimental data here, that will actually fix that. So if I go to the Space Center and look at the space station again, you'll see that we actually have the same idea. Although let's bring this space station to daylight real quick. Just so we can see it a little better. There we go. There's a happy space station with a uh, not so happy tug. But same idea here. We have research that's actually going on down here. And right now we have a whopping total of 2.5 signs that can be transmitted. Note that I have a lot less data here. So the rate of science here is a lot slower, but the same kind of thing here. If we just do it for the fun here. If we transmit the science, we can transmit what we have. And there is our thing doing that. And we gained two science, and we're back down to 0.506 science. So this space station is not really a research station. It's going to be more of a refueling platform, which will be important in the days ahead. As we're shooting for Ike next, that's it for now. This is Asher. Thank you for watching. Feel free to comment or like or just say anything. Subscribe if you feel inclined. But otherwise, it's great to have you here. Thanks for sticking around. See you next time with more Kerbal Space Program, where we'll be firing even larger rockets. If you thought what I fired is big, just wait till you see what I'm sending to Duna. It may not even fit on one mothership. But hey, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.